An international team of scientists have discovered three potentially habitable planets 40 light years from Earth. The discovery seen through a Belgian-built infrared telescope shows us that we might be closer to determining whether there is life outside our solar system than we previously thought. So this research was funded in part by uh, the Belgian Fund for Scientific Research, as well as NASA and the European uh, Research Council. It was conducted by uh, several researchers at the University of Liège in Belgium, as well as MIT. So this is really, this is actually kind of fascinating stuff because uh, generally speaking, when uh, researchers are looking for life outside of our solar system, they look at stars that are more like our sun, right? Um, but it turns out that one of the uh, the scientists involved, Michael Gillon and Emmanuel Jehin, they are uh, at the University of Liège. They decided to take a risk, and they built a telescope that is even more sophisticated and more precise than the Hubble, um, and it, it focuses on uh, dwarf stars. So dwarf stars are small, cooler stars that are invisible to um, optical telescopes and so this uh, this sophisticated telescope actually uses infrared wavelengths to be able to see so what they did is they uh, they set this up and for about 62 nights uh, from September 2015 through uh, you know, 62 nights after that, um, they used this infrared signal to determine whether or not there were potentially, like basically little mini eclipses to see if, if something was orbiting around that dwarf star. It turns out there was, and it mm. turns out that there are uh, three potentially habitable planets there. Um, so we'll get into the the details in just a moment, but just hearing that, is is that pretty cool or what? It's it's ultra cool, I believe <laughs> is the term you're looking for, because isn't that, isn't that the, the, what, how the, the plant or the sorry the, the the dwarf star is 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 called because it's it's a ten, it's a half the temperature of our sun right exactly. so as a consequence it's called an ultra cool it's star. it's ultra cool that's that's a good thing yeah so it th yeah this particular uh, this dwarf star it's called trappist 1 that's named after the telescope that they use um, it is it's about a an, they say an eighth or a tenth the size of our sun the mass, it's about yeah the right. mass yes it's about the size of jupiter and it's half the temperature of our sun so what it does is because it it's not as bright it does in, it doesn't interrupt planetary signals, which is why they were able to uh, find these planets. Because generally, up until this point, if you're looking at stars that are more like our sun, those those signals are, are actually interrupted. So to talk a little bit about the planets that they found, uh, as I said, there's there are three of them. Um, all three apparently have temperatures uh, that are suitable for uh, the existence of either liquid water or life. So right now they're they're actually all uh, tidally locked, those sort of the, which is like the moon, where that means that they have permanent day sides and permanent night sides. So it's unclear whether or not um, maybe the the day sides are too hot or if the, the night sides are too cold, whatever. Right. But what they're what they're wanting to discover is whether or not there's this kind of like sweet spot in there that that could have it, you know, inhabit life. So to me, this is this is awesome. I mean, at 40 light years, of course, they're not looking at people being able to go there anytime soon. That's like right. still millions of years to, to get there. But it's still at least it just opens the door for further research and, and to potentially study the atmosphere of these places and see if there is actual life there. Right, absolutely. And the prediction is, is that by 2025, we will find alien life. It's not going to be little green men, unfortunately, right. with ray guns. But there will be <laughs> some form, probably, you know, some, some form of extraterrestrial life will be discovered. And it's discoveries such as this that indicate that, yeah. that is likely. Um, you know, cynics say, well, it's just to justify NASA's continued existence, but I, I don't yeah. fall into that camp. But NASA no, you're right. It's great that it's in that it's in that Goldilocks zone, isn't it? It's neither mm -hmm. too hot, neither too yeah, cold. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking it's in that, just it's in, right. Just right. And it's in that habitable zone whereby, yeah. hopefully, life could be sustained. Yeah, absolutely. And and as you were saying, I mean, this is just a step. I mean, we've already, even over the past 25 years, we've seen so much in terms of being able to understand how kind of insignificant we are in relation to the rest of the universe and galaxies. Um, but for example, in 2018, they're uh, going to be using the James Webb Space Telescope, which can actually observe the shell of an atmosphere, determine what chemicals comprise that, determine what kind of biomarkers there are, such as oxygen, et cetera. So again, we're just going to figure out, like, is it possible for, for life to develop as opposed to us trying to go there and, you know, get all Independence Day style or whatever. So, um, but, so Julian DeWitt, who was one of the, the scientists involved, he's super stoked about this. He says, these planets are so close and their stars so small, we can study their atmosphere and composition and further down the road, which is within our generation, assess if they're actually inhabited. All of these, all of these things are achievable and within reach now. This is a jackpot for the field. 
So I guess we'll we'll wait with bated breath to see uh, what they determine about Trappist One because it might be small, but it sure has some star quality.